Riversdale, near Rathfarnham, County Dublin, was his home for the last ten years of his life. His last visitor at Riversdale was the poet F.R. Higgins, who on that October evening in 1938 heard the first reading of a long poem which Yeats had just completed. Irish poets, learn your trade, sing whatever is well made, scorn the sort now growing up, all out of shape from toe to top. Sing the peasantry and then hard riding country gentlemen, the holiness of monks and after porter drinkers randy laughter. Sing the lords and ladies gay that were beaten into the clay through seven heroic centuries. Cast your mind on other days that we in coming days may be still the indomitable Irish free. Although his creative powers were at their peak, Yeats was in the winter of his age. Most of his friends were dead. A last visit from Maud Gone revived old memories. Although crowds gathered once, if she but showed her face, and even old men's eyes grew dim, this hand alone, like some last courtier at a gypsy camping place, babbling of fallen majesty, records what's gone. The lineaments, a heart that laughter has made sweet, these, these remain, but I record what's gone. A crowd will gather and not know it walks the very street where on a thing once walked that seemed a burning cloud. To his friend Ethel Manning, Yeats wrote that he was arranging about his burial. It will be in a little remote churchyard in County Sligo where my great-grandfather was the clergyman a hundred years ago. Just my name and the dates and these words. Cast a cold eye on life, on death, horseman, pass by. Next day, Yeats left Ireland to winter in this hotel here at Cap Martin. A very wise old man dozing in the sun. Man can embody truth, but he cannot know it. I must embody it in the completion of my life. A month later, he was dead, buried here in the hilltop cemetery of Rockbrun. His friend Dorothy Wellesley was present. The scene was not inappropriate, nor devoid of dignity. Yet, alive or dead, brought dignity and distinction wherever he came. <laughs> 